All right, welcome to the People's Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Doug By here as always with Mike Rossi, Andrew Garganese, and Joey G. Money Ginolfi. It was a wild, wild Sunday for football. Miami putting up 70. Uh, but he got the record. Come on, Mike. Go for the record. No, I did the right thing. He did the no. right thing. Don't be like that. I agree with Joe. What do you mean? You got to have no. some karma. Good karma. Don't go for the record. I'm with Mike here. You fucking step on their throats. Okay. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> I didn't know Joe would be the one that's not a douchebag. <laughs> he is. Internally, he's a douchebag. Just in, on camera, he has an act. Oh, uh, no. He's putting always on that nice guy. with sports. Always gamesmanship. The nice guy act. All right, let's jump right into it. We have a lot of topics today. We're doing champ and chump, or champ and chump. We're doing panic meter. We're doing buy low, sell high, and we're going to be talking about all the best waiver ads of the week. So let's start it out with champ and chump of the week. And Mike, who's your champ of the week? I mean, it has to be Devon A. Chain, right? That fucking guy was incredible. 19 carries, 208 yards. Five catches for 34 yards and four total touchdowns. And basically his first NFL game. I, I mean, I know he played a little bit the first two games, but this is his first full NFL game. Heading into the week, he had 0.9 points. And now after week three, he's an RB2 on the year. That's just insane to think about. 49.3 and half PPR. So, yeah. I mean, if nobody else picked them, so we, we had to have – at least a dolphin and as a champ of the week. Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. Now, do you think that game script, the way that game went, obviously he's not going to be doing this every week and most of it still looked really good. So. Yeah, I, th- I think mainly the, the reason why he's a champ of the week, obviously he's not going to come out and do this every week and he's still in a timeshare, but he's earned, he, he's carved out a full time role on this offense. So, um, most of its numbers are going to start to come down and obviously a chain is going to come down, but it's going to be a split back backfield. And at the end of the day, a chain is the younger, more explosive, fresh legs running back. And he's eventually going to take out even more of that role. Yeah. And that's a good point. It, it's, it is the champ of the week, not the champ of the season. All right, Joe, who's yours? Uh, so mine, CJ Stroud, man. Um, he didn't have a huge blow up game where he put up like 30 or 40, but 24.6 for CJ, uh, 282 touchdowns. And the big thing, no interceptions. He has no interceptions on the year so far for a rookie quarterback in his first three games to look like he's got the accuracy, he's got the IQ, and, and he's looked polished and not panicked. Um, I, I just I have a lot of faith in CJ Stroud going forward, and he gets my champ of the week. Nice. Yeah, I saw the no interceptions today when I was looking at his name. And for like a super flex league, you got to have him in there now. But even as a maybe a streamer, I don't know. I don't want to ruin anything from later. But uh, all right, Andy, <laughs> who's your uh, champ of the week? Keenan Allen. That is just going to be an every week thing until, until he doesn't show up. Actually, was he your champ last not, week? No, I don't know. I think he went. Oh, okay. Been, okay. He just. We're just going to talk about him every week because he deserves it. Dude almost had 20 catches. He threw a, he threw a 50-yard touchdown. He's just doing it all. It's incredible to watch. Uh, he's still relatively cheap in DK. I mean, he's just – there's just every – any way you can have shares of this guy, you should have. What's his what's his price this week, Andy? What do you think it is in, D, in DK? Oh, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to say – 7,600, right? Yeah, uh, probably. Ooh, I think, Who are they I think playing? more. They're playing. No, it no, was, was seventy six hundred. Oh yeah, he's got to be in the eights, but low eight, eight one, probably eight. I don't know who they're yeah. playing. Maybe eight. They got the Raiders. Oh god, eight, three eight four. <laughs> <laughs> Pump that up, and with Mike Williams out, yeah, I mean, no. yeah, he's a uh, yeah he's he's going to be uh he'll be a stud again. He'll be a champ again. All right, my guy is Zach Moss. Um, <laughs> Again, champ of the week, probably not champ of the season, but he 30 carries for 122 yards. He had two catches for 23 and a touchdown, dominated those carries. He had 30 out of 35 of the carries that they had. Uh, He did it against what was, up until that game, a tough Ravens defense on the run, against the run. And I think 
the same way a chain kind of carved out his role for the rest of the season somewhat i how can you not use him a little bit the rest of the year even with jonathan taylor back uh because we don't know what kind of jonathan taylor we're going to get either so that is mine yeah and we don't even know if he's going to get instantly traded too there's that as well you so there's the opportunity for him to be the lead back the rest of the year you just you don't know right now that's it's still in flux and we shall see all right mike who's your chump of the week did we do joe's champ yeah we yeah. sure did yeah. oh i yeah. didn't listen to a word of it <laughs> all right very nice thanks my, a lot mike appreciate it my chump of the week is joe's league winner it's darren waller just had to throw in there that it's your league winner, Joe. Obviously, had to get that in there. But, <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> he Not caught nice. three of his seven targets for 20 yards, 3.5 <laughs> points, and uh, half PPR. Uh, but he's really, for this one, it's the chump of the week, but it's really, it's going to be for the whole year, I think, because he's actually leading that team as, as the leading receiver with 19.2 fantasy points on the year. The leading receiver. They just have nobody else to throw it to. So defense is just, who do we take away? Darren Waller. We'll double him. They have nobody else to throw it to. So when you're doubling a tight end and you can get away with it like that, I don't know. I just don't see him coming out of this chump status. I have I have one just written down for the rest of the year. Darren Waller. Chump status. <laughs> it's his... not his fault. Darren, if you ever listen to this, when we get big and famous, <sighs> it's not you. It's the rest of the team. <laughs> Daniel Jones in particular. Mm-hmm. All right, Joe, who's your who's your chump of the week? Uh, so my chump of the week is multiple people because it's the entire Chicago Bears offense, <laughs> which is God fucking awful. Which includes so, Doug's league winner. <laughs> Shots are just being fired left and right. Fired right now. I didn't bring that Mike up, Doug. Upset. I was like, Mike's, Mike's yeah, just firing the bullets right now. Uh, now, Fields had 99 yards passing against the Chiefs. I mean, that's just atrocious. Uh, he's only had uh, two uh, – sorry, the first three games, he's had 216, 211, and 99. He's got four interceptions. And the big thing, he's only got one rushing touchdown in three games. That's what he's good at, and he's not doing it enough. So, Justin Fields, big-time chump. DJ Moore, he had – he was like non-existent yesterday, and obviously it correlates with Justin Fields. He's only got 170 yards on the year, and he had a, a 104 in game two. And then Khalil Herbert, he's just not getting the ball. He's not catching like we thought he might earlier in the year. Um, so, whole Bears offense. See you later, chumps. <laughs> you think that's going to continue um, for the foreseeable future here? Like you, you see I'm not any- touching – any Bears players until I see a little bit of improvement, but I'm done. I'm done with them all. Week two, I gave DJ Moore and Field a shot, and I'm done. <laughs> so it would have. Go ahead, Mike. It would have been even worse if it wasn't for that garbage time touchdown with like when it was 41 to three. <laughs> Justin Fields threw a touchdown to DJ Moore. If it wasn't for that, their numbers would be even uglier. Oh. That was huge for me in a couple of my leagues. Right there, that DJ Moore <laughs> touchdown, man. Um. <laughs> Just to just to uh, defend my boy Khalil a little bit, I haven't really watched the Bears game. I don't believe this year, but him and Roshan are averaging like the same amount per carry. Like, is he is he really looking that bad? And he's catching a couple balls a week. I, I don't know if it's just that offense or or if it's him. Or... All right. Yeah, I think it's just the offense. I mean, he hasn't had enough. They both only have like twenty carries on the year in three games. I mean. Yeah, the offense just can't stay on the field because they're not getting first downs and they can't complete passes. Yeah, if anything, it's kind of looking like it might be a 50-50 timeshare there now. Mm-hmm. But all right, Andy, who's your chump? Chump of week three for me is Nico Collins. Uh, came out of the gates week one and two. Looked looked apart. Looked like maybe he's a wide receiver one in the NFL. Uh, he got a little bit more attention this week, and he got three targets two catches and like 35 yards. So, I mean, if you want to, you want to play with the big boys, you want to be, you know, the guy on the team, you've got to, you got to perform every week. And he just, he didn't do it. Uh, not that I don't you know, think he's capable. I'm a Michigan guy. So you know, I'll ride with him, but it's a tough week for him. So my boy Tank Dell stepped up and uh, Nico, Nico, bad week, chump week three. Andy, right. rest of the season, Nico or Tank? 
probably Nico. Okay. Rookie wide receivers outside of like Jamar and Justin Jefferson in a recent memory always seem to kind of hit a rookie wall more than any other position. So you might you might get a little fatigue come those, you know, week 13, 14. I think Nico will kind of kind of push through. But yeah. close. And it's probably going to be like it has what it was yesterday and through the first three weeks is where Tank's probably going to be the boom bust guy and Nico's going to be more consistent, I think, than he was yesterday, at least. It's tough. It's tough to be a, a legit wide receiver at Tank's size. Like, you got to be very skilled. And he is, but you got to be week in and week out, like, very, very skilled. It is, it's tough. Yeah. 5'7, right? Yeah. five. I mean, if they list you at 5'8, you're probably 5'5 five, five and a half. <laughs> that's also true yeah. all right my my uh my chump of the week is calvin ridley i think we lost mike for a sec uh <laughs> and again this, this is yeah and again this is just chump of the week i i think he'll he'll bounce back from this but he only had seven tar- well he had seven targets but he only had three catches out of that for 40 yards that whole jacksonville offense just looked terrible yesterday what is going on in Jacksonville, dude? It, it makes no yeah. sense. Um, ETN yeah. actually came away from it looking okay, uh, fantasy wise at least. But Lawrence but Tank stole his touchdown, and then that happened. So frustrating. Yeah. Yep. But Lawrence is he's just looked like trash so far. Uh, and I will say, I I think Calvin Mikey. Ridley. Oh, sorry. No, it's all right. I think Calvin Ridley's an honorable mention. Um. In the buy low as well, though. And, and we'll be talking more about buy low, sell high later. All right. Andy, do me a favor. <laughs> Don't get I know. He, You're Andy's ahead of me. Ahead. You're Andy ahead of me. Always ahead. Got your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's gonna work throughout this game. Like, he's not going to be able to, like. <laughs> he can't shut his mouth. He couldn't shut his mouth. About the, what was it? NC State, you said? It was a yeah. college game in the background you were talking about the other day. Yeah. And he's definitely going to have some, you know, in the face. You're going to see yeah. some kind of expression <laughs> on what yeah. happens, even if there's not words behind it. All right. Let's go. Let's jump to our next segment that was really fun last week, and hopefully we can make it fun again this week, and that's the panic meter. I got no yeah. background this time, so we should be good with my numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of made it last week. I love that. Yeah, watching you bob and weave out yeah. just to catch the glimpse. <laughs> Or some fucking ten. Actually, that is pretty wild. There's no background for you, Joe, huh? No background this week. Yeah, man. I was trying to keep it clear for the numbers. All right. Showing the old turns. All right. Let Let's start it with uh Garrett Wilson. So, since you know Zach Wilson has taken over, he really has not been too too great, and it's been a little scary. It's to see what happens here. Yesterday, he had five catches for 48 yards. Um, what do you guys have, Matt? Oh boy! So Mike's got a four, Joe's got a six, Andy's got a six. I'm actually an eight right now. Woo! So Mike, let's talk about your four. Well, Doug, I just want to mention something. Yeah, I gave you the names again, yeah. and you said <laughs> I don't have anybody on anybody's list this time. <laughs> And guess who my guess who the first fucking guy that you name is? Somebody on one of my lists. Seriously, I, 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 I honestly thought pick, as soon as I heard Garrett Wilson, that's I awesome. Like, oh, here we go. That's a real I, 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 I swear I did not mean for that to happen. <laughs> All right, maybe so, subconsciously what? it was like let's fuck him again. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna say too much because we're gonna talk about this guy later. Well, let, uh, let's yeah, but I'm not I'm not I'm not panicked because. There's still a chance that somebody else comes in here and saves a day for him. So I'm I, the reason why I'm not panicked is because I don't want people to give up on him and go ahead and and trade him. Don't trade him because if they sign somebody else, then better numbers are to come. And he's still getting the targets, just they're not very good ones right now. The Lamar targets, yeah. <laughs> they're basically, and they're even worse. They're Zach Wilson. They might be worse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's jump to uh, Ramondre Stevenson then. Where are you guys at on him? Uh, he hasn't. He definitely has not been living up to the draft capital that we had for him. 
Uh, since Zeke has been there, he's been taking a little bit more than we thought he was going to. Yo, way to cross out the six and then write another six. Bro. I read. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. All right, we got a 6-6 six, six, th- six thing going on between the three of you guys, huh? Uh-huh. All right. Oh, four sixes. <laughs> four sixes. So we're all in the Pretty same boat here. We're, we're all a little bit panicked about this. Um, Andy, go ahead. I think you should talk about it. This is your team. You want me to talk about it? I, want uh, you, I was, I want I was trying to give you guys the same thing, but I'll talk about it. I'll, I'll talk about Ramondre. He, to me, he hasn't looked great. Uh he doesn't seem to have the same kind of burst he had last season. The eye test is telling me right now that Zeke actually looks like he's a little bit faster and quicker than Ramondre, which is fucking shocking. I didn't think that that was going to be the case. Um, so I'm a little bit panicked about it because I think that the I think Bill loves a guy like Zeke who has the history of performing really well. He trusts a guy like that, that he's not going to be making the mistakes as much. Uh, Ramondre had a little fumbling issue too in the past. So I, I would not be surprised if this turns into just a straight up 50, 50 or even worse than that for Ramondre. So that's kind of where I'm at on it. Yeah. Yes. I think Zeke's look better than, uh, I think Zeke's look better than a lot of people thought. I think he looked better than he did last year, to be honest with you. So I think he could take a lot more carries coming up soon. Completely agree. All right, next guy on there, uh, one of Joe's favorites, Justin Fields. Where are we at on him? Yesterday was, I mean, I think we've talked about it enough. That was that was pretty freaking disastrous. I think he had, what, how many yards? Uh, he had ninety nine <laughs> yards passing. And a... <laughs> is that is that a nine or is it reversed? It's uh, it's reversed on here, but. It might, it might, it might look okay when it's recorded. So I'm, I'm a five. A nine. I'm a five. Uh, Mike's a nine. Joe is finished with him. He doesn't even have a number. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Andy's a seven. So Joe, I got to talk to you. Man. Yeah, you're finished. I mean, as we just talked about it when he was my chump of the week, he fucking stinks. Like I don't care who his coach is. He finally got. We saw DJ Moore do big things in Carolina with not great quarterbacks. So DJ Moore's talented. Justin Fields just can't get them the ball. And there's there's nothing else to say. There's nothing for where people took him. Like he's not doing the rushing anymore. Even if he does the rushing, it's not gonna make up for anything. He just he can't throw. He stinks. I'm done. I don't even want to watch him anymore. <laughs> he's he's gotta run to have value. And like that's what he needs to do for a fantasy perspective. He needs to just do more of it. I think they're a better team when he's not throwing the ball, which is funny to say in 2023, but they need to run the ball. He needs to be running the ball. And I mean, they're not going to be good in any capacity, but at least fantasy players can get some value out of this offense. If he can just talk and run. Do you yeah, think, no, go ahead, Mike. Do you think there's a part of him that's like this season's over? I'm not, I'm I'm not running it because I don't I'm not getting hurt for this team. I think part of it might just be that he, he wanted to prove he could throw the ball to start the season, and maybe the coaches are like begging it, you know, begging from him to stay in the pocket. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's not fucking working. <laughs> Let the boy run. He's a crazy um, athlete. Yeah, he is. I mean, last year at times he looked dominant, uh, running the ball, not passing the ball. <laughs> but I mean, they got to go back to that. It, it's it's why I'm not. I was a five. It's why I'm not overly panicked about it because of that, but I'm pretty, you know, I'm right in the middle. All right, let's go to the next guy. Uh, goes hand in hand, DJ Moore. So yesterday um, he had three catches for 41 yards. Like Mike was saying before, he had that garbage touchdown, which really saved his fantasy day. But overall, where are you guys at on DJ Moore right now? So Mike's a seven. I'm a six. Joe's an eight. Andy's an eight. So Andy, talk about your eight. All right. So my eight should be a seven, but I made fun of Joe for crossing out his and then redoing it. So I went with an eight. Uh, I'm really not that panicked um, just because I didn't think he was going to have a good season. He is performing worse than I thought he was going to. The field is actually throwing worse than I thought he was going to, which is pretty crazy. Uh, 
I mean, the bottom line is the receiver has to be able to have the ball thrown to him to have any type of fucking value, and it just can't happen. So that's panic. Yeah, I, th- I think we can all agree with that. The only way it comes down from an eight is if they change the quarterback. If they change the quarterback, I'll be less worried. I heard there's this rookie out in Chicago, kind of look good in the preseason. Somebody I don't was, know. Somebody was just talking saying, about that recently. There was some insider. Do we have his name yet, Andy? Can I really got to look it up. Uh, I'll tell you what. If he played it, if he I played it for Tyler Bajan, something Ooh, that like that. Sounds right. Yes. Something Is he like the that. immediate the backup there, though? Is he the immediate backup on the Bears? Yeah, I mean, yeah. man, him and Nathan Peterman. You're not putting Nathan Peterman in. Not unless Shout you want to throw interceptions. Man. I mean, he'll throw the ball. it will just be a lot of interceptions. Hold on, where did he go? <laughs> All right, next guy, Josh Jacobs. Where are you guys at on him? <laughs> Yesterday, he had a little bit of a bounce back game. Uh, he had 17 rushes for 62 yards, uh, three catches. But still for the season, he's only averaging 2.4 yards per carry. Um, that nine carries for negative two yards kind of doesn't help with that, but all right. Mike's got a four. Joe's got a six. I'm at a three. Andy's at a six. All right. Mike, talk about your four. Um, I don't have it in front of me anymore, but I did. I looked at his schedule coming up in the next, you know, I think it was like three, four weeks and it was all green matchups. So I'm not worried yet because (laughs) It's his time right now where he can he can come out and you know finally prove that he, he was worth the pick. So after a few of the next weeks, if it's if it's still doing this, if he's still doing the same stuff he was doing right now, then yeah, I'll be worried, but I'm gonna give him a chance to to rebound coming up. It's it's a tough position to be in with him too, because like you're not gonna get the value where you drafted him, right? You kind of have to hold and hope that he shows who he's been, you know, for the last season at least. So I I don't know. There's, there's really not much you can do with him given where you probably draft him. Yeah, that's that's why I wouldn't pack, panic with him yet because you really don't have any other option but to ride it out. You don't. And luckily for the people who did draft him, I mean, if he actually was in camp the whole time, they would have drafted him in the first round probably, right? Late first maybe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you if you got offered most of it for him right now, would you accept it? No. No, I wouldn't accept that either. No. No, you got to ride him out a little bit longer. I think. Joe, where you at with that? Uh, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. You, you got to ride him out. And like you said, he didn't play in training. He wasn't in training camp. So this is his his training camp preseason. Yeah. Plus, oh, well, a, a Chan. A, a Chan. Shafter tweeted out how he wants his name pronounced. I can't remember what it is. But it's not A Chan. We're saying it wrong. Anyway, so not A Chan? Oh, okay. no, a, a, a Chan, I think. H-M. But either way, with him emerging, you know, most are as I'm not really buying high on him. And right. Tyson Bagan. Bagan? Bagan? B A G E N T. Yeah. That's, that's the tough. rookie backup on the Bears. Where'd he yeah. go? Was it Shepherd? Is that what Where I just saw? I thought it was Florida. Yeah, Shepherd. 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 Yeah. Shepherd. Never even heard of that at school. But yeah, Bears star quarterback. It's coming. <laughs> All right, next pick guy. Pick him up, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> heard it here first. Don't, don't, pick, don't pick him up. Don't pick him up. <laughs> next guy, Derek Henry. This is an oh, interesting one. I didn't think we were going to be panicking one. about Derek Henry yet, um, or at all this year. So wh- where's everyone at on that? <laughs> all right, Mike's got a Whoa, seven. Seven. Uh, Joe's no, two. Can't see it. Is that a two? Yeah, Joe's two. I'm two. And... Andy's four. Seven. Mike, let's hear we, gotta, it. we gotta go to your seven, man. Because oh, you're let's hear it. the craziest score <laughs> just, of the day. I'm not, I mean, granted, I'm not panicking about Derrick Henry himself, but Tannehill what? looks that's, so that's who we're talking about. No, no, no. What name did what <laughs> name did Doug no, listen, say? listen, <laughs> listen to me, would you? I think Derrick Henry is still the Derrick Henry of last year, but Tannehill looks so bad. That people, what do you throw for 105 yards or something? People are just gonna stack the box, seven, eight in the box at all times. And unless Derrick Henry can get a quick run, like he, he's not gonna, he's just not gonna perform. I don't know. I just I just see this going south for the Titans offense, and Derrick Henry is going to average 3.5 on the year. <laughs> they didn't okay. have a quarterback last year. 
Or the year before He looked that. better than he does yeah. this year. The year before he looked that. better. Current last year. The two years ago, he looked good. Last year, it was, it was Willis. And, <laughs> and Taji Spears actually doesn't look bad. I think he's going to eat into he some of the time, he too. Does not look bad. He looks no, decent, yeah, he still. doesn't look bad. He also has a nagging injury going on right now, right? thought I read that somewhere where he's got a lingering issue going on. Derrick Henry which, does? Yeah, which is why Tajay Spears has been like – it's been like a 50-50 workload, I think it was yesterday. Did not know that. I think Tajay, I think Tajay might have snapped him yesterday. He might have, yep. All right, next guy. Uh, we talked about him a little bit earlier, Trevor Lawrence. You know, the Jags, <sighs> that offense has – it's looked awful so far. On the, on the season, he's only had three touchdowns. So we expected a lot more out of him. Where are you guys at? I swear that's a five. I swear it's five. Okay, so here, comes Mike, here comes Mike with a ten. Oh, Mike, Mike Listen, put up his seven again. Trevor Lawrence, all right? It's because <laughs> Mike's got it's seven. Joe's got five. Andy's got five. I went four. Mike, we got to go back to you again. This it's offense like, just doesn't look good. <laughs> I, it's like the talk. I just put out ridiculous <laughs> numbers. Just like, I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> keep no to me if I put out ridiculous numbers. <laughs> no, I mean this is what. How many times are we going to give Trevor Lawrence a pass? I don't know. It just seems like he's he was the most hyped quarterback of all time, right? Probably up there anyway. And he he hasn't lived up to it yet. And it, we're, it, we keep saying it's common, it's common. And this is three weeks in now, and you're not happy with any of his starts. So when are we going to start panicking on Trevor Lawrence? And this whole offense doesn't look great right now. We just said it. And we keep saying, like, Calvin Ridley was chump of the week, and he could have scored a touchdown. Same thing with last week. But Trevor Lawrence has got to put the ball there. In order for them to become fantasy relevant, it's, it's on Trevor Lawrence at this point. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I just think I, I, they showed something at the end of last year. Um, he showed something in the playoffs. I expect him to rebound some. But yeah, maybe... I mean, he he started off slow last year, and as long as Doug Peterson's still there, the guy knows offense. Ross, you know that. You know he knows how to game plan. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not shutting him down yet. Yeah, I could get to a seven if he has two more games like this, but I don't think he's gonna get there. Do you expect to be to be this week coming up against the Falcons defense? Yes, if he if he has a game like this against Atlanta, I'll go to a seven next week. Why does everybody okay. hate the Falcons defense? Right? No, 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 no. That's what I meant. I, I thought that it, they have Mike a good was defense. Saying like they were a good deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think their defense is okay. I'm not sold on the defense yet. Well, their defense can be okay and still, and Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be needed much because their offense can only put up six points. <laughs> this is true as well. <laughs> Could be the game strip, game script kind of thing. All right. Next guy. Um, we got to talk about him. Najee Harris. He he averaged a whopping 3.4 yards per carry yesterday, though. So, I mean, he had that going for him. 19 attempts for 65 yards. On the year, he actually is. He's at four per carry on the year. I was surprised to see that. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, we're panicking. We're panicking on him. So, we I got a seven. Mike's got an eight. Uh, Joe's at 7.5. I like the decimal. I, li- I like bringing in the decimals. We should probably start doing that. Uh, Andy's at an eight. Joe, I want to go to you, though, just because um, this is your boy. So, yeah, it's it's he hasn't looked as good as I was hoping. Um, part of it has to do with something I'm going to talk about later. Uh, part of it has to do, though, also Jalen Warren does look good in his opportunities. Um, he, it's, it's, it's everything I want to talk about. I'm going to end up talking about later. So I think let somebody else talk, but it's just, it's not (laughs) what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Jalen Warren, he, he looks like the more explosive back. He also can catch the ball better. Um, Najee, he just looks like a plotter, man. And like, we kind of thought he was going to. So, all right, let's go to the next guy. Cause I know Joe's going to cover a lot of the Steelers later. (laughs) Let's, um, Let's let's talk uh, Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> so on the year, he only has 72 yards total um, on 11 catches. <laughs> Mike's a smart ass. All right. 
So I can't see Andy's number. So, so I got a five. Joe's is. got a five. Andy's got a four. And Mike is at three point one four one five nine two. So Mike's just because he's hungry. Uh, yeah, you made the decimal comment. He had to buy in. Of course he did. <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Talk about it. Actually, you know what? No, hey, I'm this... sorry. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say. I want but... Andy to talk about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I would like to see more production from where he's at, but I didn't. I didn't expect him to come out and start too hot. Um, I thought it was going to take a few weeks for him to kind of get into it. Once again, they're asking him to to read defenses, which is a little bit probably more advanced than he's ready for. You know, he's got to be able to find his option route where he's sitting in a zone. You know, he's asked to block. He's got to he's got to do a lot of things. So the learning curve is taking a little bit longer. Well, not a little bit longer. It's a little bit wider, I guess, than than. I was hoping. I thought he'd be maybe a little bit more productive, but I thought it was going to take time. So I'm not really panicking. He's still got all the skill in the world. He's out there a lot, which is what you look for, right? You want to see him playing. Um, so hopefully the targets will come. And, I mean, honestly, they, they fucking Gabe Davis Steph Diggs look unguardable. So not really, not really any reason to throw anywhere else. All right, yeah, most of the time rookie tight ends do struggle at least the first half of the season, if not the entire season. Uh, Laporta and that's, is and that's one of the things different guy. It, but go ahead. Is that when you drafted Dalton Kincaid, you you weren't expecting much. Like everybody no. went into the season knowing that rookie tight ends take a while. The only reason why he's even on this is because how often he's been on the field. Like people saw him on the field and instantly thought production was happening, but he's still learning. So. It's it's exactly where he we all thought he was going to be, but people just got high hopes when they saw his snap count. Yeah, Laporta is very abnormal to what he's doing right now. He he looks great on Detroit. All right, next guy, Javante Williams. Coming off that injury, everyone's worried about that. Yesterday he had eleven carries for forty two yards. It's kind of what he's been averaging around. You know, he gets he's been getting over eleven carries a game, but just the production is not quite there yet so i'm at a three mike's at a five joe's at a seven andy's at a seven so joe let's go back to you i mean the big thing i'm worried about with him is one the offense hasn't looked great they had a decent game against washington in week two um but this week against miami which miami i think has a slightly above average defense i don't think miami has a great defense they didn't do a lot but also too their defense looks awful right now as we just saw and uh miami made them look like a jv if not freshman team (laughs) freshman team um so if they're if they're playing from behind all the time he's not going to be able to run the ball they're not going to be able to set a tone and the the whole team doesn't look like they have the full concept of sean payton's offense down yet yeah or or any Kind of an offense or defense, <laughs> especially. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think we can uh, we can all agree with that assessment. All right, boys, I was panic muted. That was fun again. Mike, I like that segment. Mike, yeah, update cool. on the game behind you. Three nothing. I just realized that for some reason my uh, TV thought I wasn't watching it and went to black screen for a while there, so I missed some of it. I got I got two into the panic meter. It's uh, three nothing bucks, correct? No. Eagles. Oh, all right. All right. I figured it was the, if it was the Eagles, you would have said it. No, no, three nothing Eagles. All right, we're gonna do a new segment here. It's gonna be a fun new segment that we're trying out here. See how it goes. I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's gonna be called Joe's Beef of the Week. So we're gonna give him, you know, a couple minutes just to kind of. Joe's got a lot of frustration, you know, after a Sunday of losing all of his bets and everything. We want to get it off his chest. We want to let him just vent to the audience and get it out there. So, Joe, what are you venting about this week? Luckily, this week, my vent won't have to do with any of my gambling. Saturday, we hit some college stuff, so I didn't. I wasn't bad losing yesterday. It's okay, but we got wiped yesterday. I can say that. Uh, my beef is with Matt Canada, and I'm going to my own team on this one. Because it is so frustrating to watch this offense play football right now. They don't do anything I like. And as a Steelers fan, (laughs) we have watched this offense run the ball 
with a system that has worked for probably 40 years, if not more. Um, this team is about power running game and you double team on your blocks and you build off a of double team blocks and then let the guard or the center go to the second level. All Matt Canada does up until last night was do zone scheme running. And because of how bad it had been the first two weeks is why he made a little bit of a change. But they still couldn't close the game out. Josh McDaniels kicked a field goal because he wasn't afraid of this Steelers offense at the end of the game. He was willing to give them the ball back. Luckily, they did get a first down, but Raiders got the ball back. Nobody is afraid of this offense. They are 27th overall right now in offense, and they have too much talent. George Pickens is a great player. Jalen Warren, we all know, can get things hey. done. Um, I still think Najee Harris has talent, but it's not the right system. He is not a zone scheme running back in any way, shape, or form. Um, as you saw, Calvin Austin had a big touchdown yesterday. He just doesn't scheme right. He does it for a play here and there. He doesn't do what his players have the ability to do. He does what he thinks he likes as an offense. And it couldn't be more frustrating to fucking watch every week. <laughs> Yo, are you, uh, you a Kenny Pickett guy? No, I'll be honest. I didn't want them to draft a quarterback last year. I wanted to try to figure something out. Um, I was finally happy with the way they drafted this year because they drafted mostly needs. Um, but I'm not sold to Kenny Pickett. Two weeks ago, Pickett missed a lot of open throws against Cleveland. He, he There was one ball he threw at Pickett's feet when he was wide open on an inner post route. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just that I'm, I'm not a fan of anything besides the run game and the defense right now when the right run plays are called. When they had the double team blocks and then go to the second level, that's when they were actually getting some yards last night. All right, Joseph. It was uh, very informative, pretty angry. It was good. It's what we want. I hope he gets fucking fired. <laughs> so you slayed that. that. Very good. I fucking hate Matt Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that bizarre stat that they put up on the screen last night about Najee Harris? It was there for like legit like two seconds and then took it right off the screen. So you must not have seen it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm seeing things. But it said something like, Najee is 183 yards behind what his expected total should be, which is the worst in the NFL since 2021, I believe. The weird stat, oh, but that they tracks. Do. Yeah. All right, <laughs> that is an odd stat. Yeah. And I couldn't look it up. I didn't know how to look that up. You know. <laughs> so. All right, let's go to the next segment. Buy low, sell high. Mike, who's your buy low? My buy low, well, he already talked about him a little bit, but it's Garrett Wilson. I'm buying him. Uh, right now, he's the wide receiver 27 on the year. Um, when you look at the top wide receiver, I mean, the top 30 for wide receivers so far, there's a lot of names that you wouldn't expect to be in there. Um, and I'd happily trade any of these people on my list I have here. I'll go over them for Garrett Wilson. And my reason is, it isn't because I think Garrett Wilson is great right now, but like I said earlier, I think that they're going to either trade for a quarterback or pick up a quarterback and his value is going to not come back to what we thought it was going to be with Aaron Rodgers, but come back to earth a little bit because Zach Wilson just, he's that guy's terrible. But all these guys are top 30 wide receivers on the year. Christian Kirk, I trade Christian Kirk for Garrett Wilson in a heartbeat. And I'll just go through the list. Sorry, Andy. Gabe Davis, Kendrick Bourne, Cortland Sutton, Hollywood Brown, George Pickens, Romeo Dobbs, Jacoby Myers, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Adam Thielen. I trade any of those people for Garrett Wilson right now. And the Garrett <laughs> Wilson owners, they're frustrated. They're, he's on their bench probably. And these are all people that you drafted to either be in your flex or in the bench. So you're not giving up. Um, a lot. And now granted, the only way I would do this is if I have a healthy team that can afford giving this player up for Garrett Wilson for the future, because this is a playoff run move. This isn't a move to get you a win in the next two weeks or so, but it could win you a game in the playoffs when it matters the most. 
Yeah, you got to be like a two and one, three and zero team to be making that trade right now. Most of my teams aren't making that trade right now. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, who's your buy low? Uh, so I swear to God, I had this buy low before Rossi announced his chump of the week, but Darren Waller, I'm buying Darren Waller from guys <laughs> like Rossi that are giving up on him. Um, yeah, Darren Waller's look terrible. He's still eighth in, t- uh, for tight end in fantasy right now, and he's done nothing yet. And this offense has looked terrible. Listen. Giants have to score points and have to figure out something. Brian Dayball's still too good of an offensive-minded guy. I'm not giving up on him getting Darren Waller in the game. Um, I was a little shocked last week that Jalen Hyatt didn't get more snaps and more targets last week with how he played two weeks ago and show that he could do some explosiveness. Um, but I think once they can get him into the offense more, that's going to open up things for Darren Waller and – Perfect example, Mike showing how much he doesn't like Waller right now. If I can find an owner, if you can find an owner, take the chance. I mean, I think it's worth it with the potential and talent that he has. So, Yeah, there's still nobody else there. It's just him. And as long as he stays on the field, he's going to be getting the targets. But it's all about if he stays on the field. All right, Andy, who's your buy low? Terry McLaurin. Um, <laughs> constantly disrespected year in, year out. You know, he doesn't have the size, he doesn't have the flash, but he just makes plays. Um, Sam Howell isn't as bad as that stat line against the Bills. He just, he ran into an avalanche, the wheels fell off, and he just, he couldn't get out of his own way. But he, in the beginning of that game, he really, he really wasn't playing too bad. It just kind of collapsed. And, you know, McLaurin was winning one-on-one matchups. Trey White looks like he's back. He made some really good plays all season so far. Scary Terry beat him once or twice. When the ball gets thrown his way, he always seems to find a way to catch it. Um, I think Howell's going to improve going forward. I think he's pretty much at rock bottom now. And I think, you know, people probably see that game and they're like, fuck, I'm selling all my Washington shares. And I think it's a good time to buy because the dude's talented. And I I think they're only going to get better. That connection's only going to get better as the season goes. I hope so. I hope it does. I hope so with Dotson too. I hope he gets better <laughs> throwing the ball. Doug, you, you sound so defeated when you say so, that. So depressed. <laughs> so, and this, so it's, defeated. You know. We're going to have to find a new host for the looks like 7 through 13. Listen, Washington's I, my I, second team, man. I was born in D.C. You know, it's... What were you going to say, Joe? Oh, uh, no, no. I, I just, I, you said how Washington was your second favorite team. I thought you had some fantasy connection there, and I just wanted to let people know how bad you got smacked around in our league. <laughs> well, you had the Dolphins offense against me. So. <laughs> I couldn't really do too much. <laughs> What's everyone's record in that league, by the way? I don't know. Two one. Let's uh, let's go on to uh, my buy low. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going with Mark Andrews, uh, who is a guy I have in that league. So I'm I'm really hoping that he. I uh, saw that, Mike. So I'm really hoping that he. Uh, he starts to play like we know Mark Andrews can play. We, I think he's still his favorite target there, even with Zay Flowers there. He's just he's been banged up to start the year, so it's also it's again we've talked about this a lot. It's one of those positions where there's not a lot of great ones out there. So if someone in your league, if there's a manager in your league that's panicking a little bit about Mark Andrews, go get him. Go get that stud. It'll come around. All right, Mike, we're on to you again. Is that what we're doing? Your sell high. Sell high? Yeah. My sell high, Raheem Moster. And, and, and I know, guys, I sat here last week. It's deja vu. And, I, and, I, and it was my sell high. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have enough viewers yet for me to give a shit that I'm giving bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it again this week. He just went off, right? He's, he's the RB1 on the year. I don't think anybody expects that to stay for the whole season. But I also, I'm not trying to get an RB1 for him. Like, I'm not saying go trade Moster and try to get Christian McCaffrey or, you know, Bijan Robinson. Like, no, I know that's not possible. But if you take Moster and you say Moster and, then you might be able to get like a Chris Olave you know, or, or Amon Ross St. Brown if you need a wide receiver or just Moster straight up, Amari Cooper, Debo Samuel, Calvin Ridley's having uh, is down so far. These are all guys that have potential to 
come up in. And again, if you're looking for the playoffs, win you the league. Um, and I and and I've I've been adamant on saying that most is going to lo- lose this role. So I just think it's a win-win. Yeah, you you certainly have been adamant about that. And I don't think obviously he's going to have the kind of game he had yesterday ever again in his career. So. <laughs> So I guess it is a good time to sell high, Mike. Good call. All right. Thanks, Doug. G Money, what do you got? Who's your sell high? So, so I got excited because I got new fuel for this. Because apparently you can get Garrett Wilson for this guy, and I would do that trade in a heartbeat. My sell high is Adam Thielen. I'm getting rid of him. Thielen. Thielen, <laughs> whatever. My bad. I pronounced <laughs> it wrong because I was reading the screen. <laughs> I had a feeling um, selling high right now. He had a huge game yesterday, but Andy Dalton was the quarterback yesterday. Uh, that's not He's not going to stay the quarterback. Once Bryce Young's healthy, he's the future on this team. He's going to be the one who's still learning, who's still not, you know, not confident throwing the ball, has that hesitation where Adam, Adam Thielen – I almost said it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's the type of guy that the quarterback's got to be able to anticipate the throw. He doesn't get a lot of separation with speed. He's a good route runner. Um, he has good hands. So if the quarterback's not anticipating where he's going to be, then it's not going to work out well, and I'm getting rid of him after he just put something up uh, this past week. Okay. I thought you were saying you something can get else a first after round that. Talent. You can get a first-round talent like Garrett Wilson, so I'm taking my chances because – Zach Wilson was his quarterback last year, and if Rossi thinks Zach Wilson's not going to be there, that's even more reason to take a chance with Garrett Wilson. Yeah, and yeah. I I don't think you would ever, anybody would ever trade Garrett Wilson for Thielen. I was just naming people in the top thirty. All right, here he and, goes. Back track. Well, I'm not back. No, I'm saying. Well, I'm not back track. Of course, track. I would trade. That's all right. I, I, I think that is kind so, of what he meant. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you're, no, you're arguing my point. I said yeah. by Garrett Wilson, like I'm trading for him. <laughs> what is okay. he talking about? All right. No, Adam Thielen. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's had a thousand yards in like four seasons or something like that. I saw something about that with him. So yeah, sell high on him because he's not going to have many of those games. Andy, who's your sell high? Zach Moss. <laughs> um, great game. Um, that's why he's my champ. That's why he's your champ. Uh, he's, one, going to get Anthony Richardson back soon. I think that eats up some of the running game. Two, Jonathan Taylor possibly coming back, which is going to, I mean, at least cut his role in half if it happens. And three, I am I watched him for a couple of years with the Bills, and I he's okay. He's just – that's more of an outlier than a than – a, than a, what to expect every week game from Zach Moss. Um, He's had, you know, these decent couple weeks and I just don't, I don't think that that's going to be sustainable, Um, especially with two people that carry the ball coming back. So if you can get good value for what is most likely a waiver pickup or like, you know, you draft them like round 14, 15, 16, if you can go and get somebody that's more set, you know, in their role and get a, and get a week in week out player for him go do that. Do that immediately. Yeah. Did he ever have a hundred yard game in Buffalo? I mean, he, they thought he was going to be a lot better out there. Yeah, no, he, he showed flashes. Then he dropped yeah. the ball a couple times and that's all it really takes, but he just never looked like a starting running back in the league. He looked like a timeshare guy. Yeah. I agree with the sell high um, on that. I just think he's, he's strung two good games together. So I do think he's going to have a role going forward and maybe like a second flex kind of guy but uh i agree all right my sell high is james connor um and really just mainly because i don't i don't buy the cardinals i don't buy what they did yesterday uh i don't think joshua dobbs is as good as he looked yesterday and connor's a little bit older for a back he's injury prone He's been super consistent. It's mainly just I don't think that offense is that good, and I don't think you're going to get another game like what he had yesterday with 98 yards and a touchdown, or not that many of them at least. All right. Do you have Connor in any in any leagues? Do I personally? That we're in together? Yeah. I do not have Connor. Nope. No. I was going to buy him from you. 
because I'm opposite of that opinion. I, I I think James Conner is here to stay. I think he's the offense isn't great, obviously, but I, he is the the guy there. And I'll, I'll take the the snap count and the production he's doing. The <laughs> offense line actually doesn't look bad, so I'll take it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just either. I mean, I don't know. I I think that was an outlier yesterday. What they did with the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys were still in shock about Diggs going down for the year. They did, they didn't look like they themselves. All right, let's get to the waivers of the week here. So, number one, one I want to talk about is Devon A, A- Chain. What what do they call him? A Kane. A what is Chan. It? I think Chan. A Chan. Yeah, I think so. I don't fucking. Yeah, we've been so. having a hard time with that name since the first episode. Actually, can we, right can we just give him a nickname and move on, so we don't have to fucking yeah. do this anymore? Yes, absolutely. Yep, let's just come up with Choo Choo. <laughs> so bad, so <laughs> fucking bad. God damn it, Mike. Oh, that was good, Joe. That was a good joke, guys. Joe, how much are you spending on your fab for H A this week? Um, <laughs> I'm not spending a ton. Um, and I know it's going to be controversial. Um, I haven't. What else is new? I haven't, I haven't <laughs> spoke on it, but I like Raheem Moser. Um, Mike McDaniel's had him in san francisco this offense and the type of play calling is designed for him um so i'm still probably only spending like 20 on him um you're not going to get him probably um but i i I just i like raheem still do you think do you think mcdaniel's plays are designed for him or they're designed for a fast running back no, yes, he's. I get what you're saying. Their their skill sets when most hurt was younger, obviously are similar and still a little similar. Um, so I think he can benefit in this offense. Um, I just I have Raheem Moser already, so <laughs> I, my number can be skewed a little bit. Um, but yeah, Mike, how much do you think you got to pay to get him this week? Mm, I'm gonna say about at least half of your fab. You're gonna have to spend to get him if, if you want to win him at least. Yeah. I currently have a waiver, I mean, a, a, a fab bet in in a league that me and Doug are both competing in. How much, and, how much um, did you do for that one? It's it's more than you can. The exact bid. amount. Oh, okay. It's more than you can <laughs> bid. Uh, no, I, I actually, I might change it. I'm not sure yet. But as of right now, I went all in and I put $92 on them. Um, just because he, I mean, he looks explosive. He's in possibly the best offense in the league probably right the best offense in the league he's perfect for the system and then there's the what if most it goes down and you have the full-time back who's perfect for the best offense in the league like i don't know i just don't want to let that go and i'd have so much regret if that happened yeah i'd be surprised if most makes it through the entire year without missing a game or two all right next guy i want to talk about um and I don't think I said it, but Devon A. Chain is only 41% rostered. So uh, in most of the leagues we play in, I think he's rostered, except for that one you said, Mike. But I was surprised that he was still that low. Next guy is Zeke. He's 43% rostered. Um, Andy, I know you like to talk about Zeke. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're running back needy, um, I think there's other options out there. But, yeah, you could spend, I don't know. 12, 15 bucks, maybe in that range. If you're really needy, go up to that high teens, maybe 20. Hey, Ramondre doesn't look like he did, but I just, I still am a firm believer that Zeke is pretty washed. So me personally, I'm probably not going that high, but if you, if you need a running back pretty badly, I mean, you're running out of options. So you got to start spending now. So. Yeah. The, I mean, it is, it's the pool is not very deep right now. And, uh, I think there's going to be some touchdowns in Zeke's future of like the one or two yard type. Uh, so, did he have a he? He didn't score this week, right? No, he didn't. Nope. But, so that means he has zero, though, zero, zero so far for the year. Well, oh, what, what's the what's the bet? What, what is it? Five. It was five. Yeah, touchdowns. five. I mean, he he's still going to get five. I mean, I'm just saying. So far, he's on pace for zero touchdowns on the year. That's all I'm saying. Mike's talking big game through three weeks of the season. Mike's got a lot to say. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> All right. Uh, next guy, Roshan Johnson. He's still only 48% owned. Uh, we talked about it a little bit that 
you know, him and Khalil Herbert, it seems like a 50-50 timeshare there right now. Uh, Mike, where are you at on Roshan? How much would you want to spend for him? He's a he's a he's a tough one. I mean, first of all, he's forty eight percent rostered, so it's in most twelve team leagues, especially if it's a double flex, he's probably not uh, an Available. option. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about him for a few <laughs> weeks to be picked up. So, um, <laughs> if he's not picked up, it's probably a ten team league, which makes it different. But I'm gonna go standard. Let's say he's sitting there in a twelve team league, double flex. I would go probably. 20 to 25 on Roshan uh, because again, he has a role that he could be a flex option right now, but it's the, what if Khalil goes down or what if he just ends up taking this backfield all to himself? And uh, I I'm, I'm willing to spend 20, 25% of my fab to, to find out. Yeah. I think after Jerome Ford and some others, we're kind of realizing that you should definitely roster those backup running backs just in case. All right, next guy, uh, Jarek McKinnon. He's only 47% owned. He had a touchdown this past week. Um, Joe, where you at on McKinnon? Uh, I'd probably hmm. spend around like a quarter on McKinnon, um, depending upon what you have left. Uh, I like McKinnon. I think he had a slow start. Um, I think yesterday is more of the type of offense that they want to run. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and Rossi just distracted me, and I lost all my train of thought right there. <laughs> um, but I, I like Jeremy Kinn. I think he's going to catch a lot of balls out of the backfield, and he scored some a good amount of touchdowns towards the end last year. So I could see him having a good good season. Yeah, he had nine recep- re- receiving touchdowns last year, um, which was, I think, like four or five more than the next running back, I believe. So the upside is there. All right, uh, next guy, Tajay Spears. We talked about him a little bit as well with the Derrick Henry situation. Um, Mike, you're big on Tajay, so I want to – and you're not big on Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Um, so how much are you spending on Tajay? I don't, I don't I don't. think you have to spend a lot on Tajay. I want him on my roster, but I don't think his name's – like people are going to go after A-Chain. They're going to go after Roshan and the people that we just talked to. I think he is – a little further down at everyone's list. So um, I think yeah, he's you can 24%. get away with... I don't know if I said that, but he's 24%. I think you can get away with anywhere between 5 and $15. Uh, and, and this is percentage, obviously, of 100 But I wouldn't go... Even if you want him badly enough, I wouldn't go any higher than that because you don't need to. Okay. Let's talk about uh, one other guy I wanted to talk about. Uh, just because he might be the starter this week, and you know if he's a if he's a three down back this week, he could be some value. And it's Melvin Gordon because Gus Edwards might not be playing with a concussion. Joe Melvin Gordon, where you at on that? <laughs> ah man, I mean, if he's the back, it, it's tough with Melvin Gordon because he's a turnover. He fumbles the ball a lot, um, and that can lose time, and that can make teams want to bring people in. Um, I would say if you're desperate, you could go up to that 10, 15 range if you really need a running back. Um, otherwise, I'm probably staying in the high single digits on a guy like him um, just because I, I don't think the ceiling's too high once Justice Hill is healthy. Um, but if you needed somebody for a spot start this week and you need a win, then you know I could see spending 10 to 15. Yeah, for those running back needy teams. And do you agree with that? Yeah, I might spend a little bit less, um, but yeah, that's that's generally the ballpark, especially if you need a guy. All right, let's go to the next guy. Let's go to wide receivers now, unless Ooh. anyone else wanted to talk about any other running backs. Mike? Uh, what about Clyde real quick? Edwards Lear. You want to talk to Spend CDH? anything on him? Uh, yeah, I, I dropped him in one of my leagues, but it was a deep <laughs> league. Um do you so think he I, just got those carries because they were up 41 to three and that's about it. it it's Pacheco's role. Yeah, that was garbage time for sure. All right. Uh-huh. I just wanted to throw his name out there because people might see that he carried the ball 16 times and wanted to pick him up. Yeah. Plus it is a three headed backfield, you know? Mm-hmm. So, all right, let's go to wide receivers. Andy, I want you to talk about this guy. Cause you love him. Your boy tank Dell 31%. Yep. 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 I uh, actually drafted him in a couple of leagues and was forced to drop him out of running back necessity. And I think more than one league. Um, yeah, I would probably spend, I mean, 
I would hope you already picked them up, but I would probably spend that 25 to 30 range. You're going to get a legitimate boomer bust flex option. If he gets more consistent with his targets, you know, if he can get into that five reception four or five receptions with his speed per game, he's basically a start every week flex. I don't think that that's going to happen, but that's, that's the upside, like a realistic upside for him. And once again, we're, we're running out of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a big fan of spending money in the beginning of the season and this is why because Same. you think you know some people there's some teams and how everything's gonna fall and it doesn't end up going that way and some people go down so burn burn that 25 30 bucks go get yourself a legitimate flex option yeah and the bye weeks are coming so he will be a flex option all right and this next guy i want to go to joe about uh adam theline um <laughs> 47 percent owned how much are you spending on him? I mean, I don't, I don't like him, and I'm selling him. So I'm, I mean, he's still a starting wide receiver. So if if you have a chance, it's worth taking a risk. Again, it depends on how needy you are. If you're needy, I could understand understand if you spent like a twenty spot on him. Um, but again, I just think those numbers had a lot to do with Andy Dalton starting that game. Um, so I'm still probably staying closer to that 10 to 13 range. Um, but if you had a high need, you, I could understand somebody going up to 20. Yeah. Reed Blankenship, baby. What was that? What was, uh, that show when we were kids, <laughs> Kenny Blankenship, most extreme challenge. That's what it was. You guys ever watched that? I didn't watch that one. <laughs> oh, no. God. Uh, no, I know what you're talking <laughs> no. about. Yeah. You look that up. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to make a combo of wide wide receiver uh, waivers here, and it's with Mike Williams going down, Quentin Johnson, and Joshua Palmer. Uh, Andy, where you at on them? Um, I think the the higher ceiling is definitely Quentin. Um, I think the higher floor is Palmer. So I'm spending more money because it's fantasy, and I want the upside. I'm spending more on Quentin, um, but I'm happy with Palmer, and I think you get him cheaper. So maybe probably that $30 range, maybe a little bit more, 35 for Quentin. And then I think for Palmer, you're probably looking at 15, maybe 20. Yeah, you could probably grab him for around there. And, and I do think he'll be, he'll be decent because he's got yeah. that, you know, he's familiar with Herbert or Herbert's familiar with him. So he knows the system. Well, as much as everybody else, but he knows, he knows it a little bit more. So yeah. Then know. Quentin Johnson, at least probably. All right. Last wide receiver, uh, Romeo Dobbs. He is rostered in 41% of leagues. Mike, where are you at on him? Uh, again, I think he's – we've been talking about him for a couple of weeks, and I think most 12 teams picked him up. But if he's still sitting out there, the chemistry – I mean, it's just that Jordan Love and, and Dobbs have gained with Christian Watson missing the first three weeks. He's here to stay. So I'm spending on him. Uh, I would say a little less than Quentin Johnson, I think, for me. Quentin Johnson and Tank Dell are the one two of the week, uh, but I would I would give uh, Dobbs the, the twenty to twenty five range right behind him. Yeah, I agree with that. Tank and Quentin are the two boom guys. All right, that's it for the wide receivers. For this next one, I want to uh, I want to turn back to Andy for this little uh, new segment that we're going to try to. Are you ready for this one or no? Do you got it? Hey, let's fire away. Okay. All right, we're going to call this one Andy's Quarterback Streams of the Week. Um, Andy's kind of made it known early on in this podcast that he does not like drafting quarterbacks in the first uh, 10 rounds, 12 rounds, 13. I don't know where he was at, but uh, <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't like quarterbacks, is what I'm trying to say. And Once again, I love quarterbacks. <laughs> There's just so many of them. I don't have to draft them early. Right, right, right. It's, it's a right. love hate. Okay, so who, so who's your stream of the week? Um, I got I got some options. So Brock Purdy is playing Zona, Arizona, who's been better defensively than we anticipated, offensively and defensively. Um, he's seventy percent owned, but he would be my number one stream if available. Um, a little bit lower on the on the totem pole here. Stafford going up against Indy. Stafford has, I mean, I we owe I owe Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford apologies for how well they've looked so far this season. You know, we kind of forget that Sean McVay was, was boy wonder there for a while with his offensive mind. He's uh Stafford's 56% owned going up against once again, a better team playing better than we think they are in the Colts. 
And then last would be Jimmy G, if he plays. I know he's questionable, but if he plays, he's going up against the Chargers, who can't stop a fucking nosebleed, <laughs> and he is uh, 14% owned. So in in order, one, two, three. He's in concussion protocol, right? Yeah. Jimmy G is, yeah. Yep. And they don't know when it happened, I think I saw. <laughs> Strong oh. breeze gives that Strong man. Strong breeze. I mean, did you see that one play where he just got like twisted like a pretzel? When yeah. He, yeah, that, oh, was, yeah. that was awkward. <laughs> All right. So for everyone who stuck around for this episode, uh, let's let's talk about tight ends because that's what they're waiting for. Stroke. The, the tight end waivers of the week. Uh, <laughs> Luke Musgraves is 18% owned. And Mike, where are you at with Luke Musgraves? How much are you spending on him? I, I think it's just Musgrave. No S at the end. But. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just an asshole. Yeah, Mike I'm just, is on I'm fire. Gonna, I'm just an asshole. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't I don't know if I want to spend a lot on Musgrave. Uh, I mean, it's a tight end position that has just looked bad as usual. So if you're desperate at tight end, if you if you you know either somebody went down or your guy is just not performing at all, then maybe go like 15 on Musgrave just to get that solid baseline. But again, we don't know when when Watson comes back, what this offense is going to look like. Um, so it is still risky and he is a rookie tight end. So he could just fall off, but yeah, if you need a tight end, I, I would start him over, uh, you know, like in Joku or somebody like that. So yeah, who completely just fell off. And that, that guy has yeah. been, everyone just wanted him to be so much better than he was and is, uh, yeah, Mus, it is Luke Musgrave and, he had six catches for 49 yards this past week. So that that's a solid line for a tight end. Most people are going to take that for their tight end spot. Yeah, definitely. All right. Next guy is, uh, and last guy, Jake Ferguson. Joe, why don't you take Jake Ferguson? How much you spend uh, on him, if anything? He's he's owned in 41% uh, no. of leagues. I would probably spend like probably 15 on a guy like Ferguson in that range if you need a tight end. Um I think he I think he looked decent. I think he's got good size. Um he's definitely getting more snaps than the other tight end, so I think you know, he's won the job at this point. Um so if if your needs there, I still like the odds and I think this offense will do better going forward and score more points. I don't think they're going to have um as bad as a week as they had this week, so I I'd, I'd give it a chance. Yeah, he had five catches for 48, so a similar stat line than uh, Musgraves. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know Mike Musgrave. I know, I know. <laughs> um, Tell me. Tell me. What an idiot. <laughs> and, then, and then we know that Dak, uh, he loves his tight ends. He always has. So, All right, yeah. boys. Good show. Another good one. Thanks for the information. So from Mike, Joey G Money, and Andrew, I'm Doug. We'll see you guys next time. Later. Go Eagles.